What's going on, everybody? This is Abong Eka. Besides being an international best-selling author, I'm also a certified public accountant, and uh, we run a tax um, tax firm called tax Res- a tax resolution firm called Economics Tax Relief. But I go on TV a lot, and I, I contribute to a lot of um, uh, television programs and magazines and blogs and podcasts uh, with regards to tax and small business and how it affects business, but also big business in general. Talk about tax policy, but. Um, the message today is actually not even a message, but I want to talk a little bit more about progressive taxes and as it relates to the state level and kind of the problem that you're going to start seeing. And I'm predicting this now. So when you watch this or when you read this, you're going to notice um, in the next few years uh, as states start to raise their tax rates uh, because um, they want more tax revenues and because there's a push in the political spectrum for some semblance of socialism or more. Uh, I wouldn't say communism, that's a little too strong, but I would say socialism in the sense where they want to raise more tax revenues for, uh, for, for, the, for the state or for the local municipalities or constituencies, you're going to see uh, one of two things happening. And in many cases, before I tell you what's going to happen, let me explain why this happens. You see this happen in places like New York, uh, also California, uh, high tax jurisdictions or high tax states where people... Uh, the, you know, the local government, either local government from the county level uh, and below, or even the governor on the state level and the state representatives and Senate, uh, they're trying, they're starting to raise taxes because they think they can generate more tax revenue by raising taxes. But here's one mistake that that one problem with raising tax revenues in that way and thinking you're going to get the same kind of response or the same kind of uh, increase in tax revenues. The problem with that is, uh, first and foremost, is Tax and economic policy have not only a symbiotic relationship, but it's more like a holistic relationship in terms of uh, the population at whole. So it's not as simple as just let's raise taxes by 20% or instead of it being a 30% tax rate, let's raise it to 70% like uh, um, Alexandria Ortazio Cortez has been saying. And let's just raise, our, you know, raise the tax rate arbitrarily and then we'll just get more money from the wealthy people. But here's the problem with that. The people who do have money who are wealthy, who are not traditionally uh, stuck with, uh, with real estate, in, in a sense, they'll just pack their stuff and move. This is not 1932 or 1929 or 1910 where you had the Art Andrew Carnegie's of the world where he had a steel plant, right? Or you have uh, John D. Rockefeller where he had Standard Oil and he had oil wells and stuff. You can actually physically tax something. Or it's not like the, like Vanderbilt where he's on a boat somewhere and he, wherever his shipyard is, you can, you can tax that. The reality of the situation is this. There's a lot more freedom of movement, especially economic movement. And the people who make enough money or who have high enough skills or who have a, a business that actually is more, that's more uh, transferable and transportable, guess what they're going to do? They're going to move to Florida. They're going to move to Nevada. You know where else they're going to move to? They're going to move to Texas. They don't have to stay in the Northeast and freeze their butts off. They can pack their stuff, pack their computers, pack their home offices, and move down south. Why would, why would you stay in California and pay 13% in income tax, state income tax, when you can go to Texas and pay zero, right? Or go to Florida and pay zero. Or go to Wyoming. Well, I don't know if anybody wants to go to Wyoming. But you go to Wyoming and pay zero. Pay zero. Or go to Nevada and pay zero. Guess what? They go to Tennessee and pay zero. Why do you think Amazon has their second location, their second headquarters in Nashville? There's, some ment- there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a financial and economic methodology there, as well as having um, high-skilled labor and uh, better tax policies, right? And as much as people don't understand and they want to complain about the Amazon, I'll, I'll do another video about Amazon uh, later on. But you know how people want to complain about Amazon and, and say it's this or that and they're, they're taking advantage and all that stuff? As much as they want to say all that stuff, the reality of the situation is this. It's not just the wealthy people. They have freedom of movement. Back in 1920, you couldn't easily transfer your money. If you had $100 million in a bank somewhere, you couldn't just call somebody at the bank and say, hey, Edgar, can you transfer my money over to Ireland? That's not how it works. Nowadays, it's a couple clicks of a button, a couple um, sign-offs, and they're all just digits. They're like binary, one and zeros being transferred over. It's just, you know, they're not even not even real cash. You can't even see it. It's all just numbers, right? And so now we're in a situation where that's what's going to happen if you start raising taxes. So the first thing's going to happen is you're going to start raising taxes. The people who have money, people who have uh, industry or who are business owners, they will pack their stuff and move. 
right, to a lower tax, tax jurisdiction. The second thing is for the regular people who are there who are maybe middle to below income wise, and they will actually have to stay because they're tied to that job and their job may not be as fluid as others. So what ends up happening to them, they end up carrying the burden of the tax or you end up with a state that has shortfalls. So Andrew Cuomo in New York has said um, they may be, they may be uh, um, approaching a budget shortfall and he's afraid that all the wealthy people are actually leaving New York State. That's been happening for a while. If, and again, if you are wealthy and you live in New York and you're in real estate, guess what? There are a lot of tax incentives for people who own real estate, as well as the acceleration and depreciation. Um, there are other uh, local benefits as well as federal benefits uh, with regards to depreciation. So you end up doing well, especially if it's a business. You can deduct all those things. The individual does not. So here's the other thing, too. The business owner who's going to pack his stuff or her stuff and move can deduct a lot of the costs, majority of the costs, as long as they're ordinary and necessary for their business. The regular person that doesn't have a job, that has a W-2 income, they can't deduct almost anything. And here's the here's rub. Because of the federal tax um, change, the tax, job, tax Cuts and Jobs Act from 2017 that, pres that Trump and uh, the Republicans uh, pushed through, right? The new tax law changes. I'm going to do another video about um, your refund in a second, but uh, let me continue with this. Um, because of that tax cut, so your state tax deduction is limited to $10,000. You know who that's going to hurt? It's not going to hurt the person who, who lives in a low tax jurisdiction because they're not paying state tax anyways. It's not going to hurt the person who has a 5% state income tax or local income tax because that's not a lot of money, right? If you make $100,000 and your, your state tax is 5%, they're gonna, you're only going to pay five grand, right? That's still below the threshold of $10,000. You know who's going to hurt? It's going to hurt the people who live in Washington, D.C., who pay 9.975%. It's going to hurt the people who live in New York City, where anywhere from 8, 9, 10, New Jersey, 8, 9, 10, uh, California, 10%. And in many cases, if you make over a million dollars, it's 13%. So that is limited literally to $10,000. So there's a lot of people, the clients that I've had, that I have, who who are gonna have, who, who paid state taxes, but their state tax uh, deductions are limited to ten thousand dollars. And it also, you can also include their property tax as well. So if you have high state tax and you have a high property tax, say for example, you're, you're, you have a home that's half a million dollars or eight hundred thousand dollars, which in the Washington D.C. area a lot of people do because that's the price of housing around here. People like that, you're going to see the same thing. Their state, their property tax deduction is going to be limited. And so they're the ones who are going to be carrying a lot of this burden from the tax because they're not getting a deduction for it. So therefore, they're going to be paying more in tax, right? Um, they might not directly be paying, but they're going to be paying more because they got less, less deductions, if that makes sense. So their taxable income will be higher. So this is the problem when you have progressive uh, increase in progressive tax rates and you're looking to try and penalize people who either have more money, who've done better in life, and and who are, uh, you know, again, rich is relative, right? There are people in the, in my area who make who have a household income of three hundred thousand dollars. It's about one hundred fifty apiece. That's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of life, but they're considered they're part of the one percent, right? One percent is about two fifty and change. They're part of the one percent. People don't know that. And so people people who make around that, maybe two hundred grand, and they talk to me and they say, "Hey, bong, I don't understand why my taxes are so high." And I say to them, I go, dude, or do that. You're in the 1%. That's, the tax cuts weren't for you. They're for the people making 30, 40 grand a year. Right? They're, not, they're not paying taxes anyways. People who, who have that kind of tax, who make that kind of income, or 25 grand, they're not, they're not paying tax in any, in any, in any case. They end, up getting, uh, they end up getting money back in many cases because of, um, uh, what do you call it again? Because of the tax credits and a whole plethora of different deductions they can get and have access to. So... Quick message today, quick story today, quick uh, importance of understanding the importance, uh, quick importance, I said importance twice, but this is the importance of understanding um, how progressive tax, taxes work and why it's a challenge and why it's a problem um, for many of the states, uh, especially in the next coming years. And if you live in a state where you have high taxes, there are other things you can probably do to, to end up mitigating and lowering your taxes. Uh, if you have any questions, just wherever I'm at, send me a message. We can talk. Um, you have any problems with tax resolution, uh, back taxes, IRS tax debt, stuff like that. Um, hit us up. That's kind of what we, that's actually what we do at economics tax relief. And I'll talk to you later. If you got any questions, put them below. I'll try to answer them as I can. Um, keep the rhetoric to yourself, but just answer uh, actual questions or ask, ask actual questions. Thanks.